this time on The Gadget Show. Otis and I go head to head. Oh! In a full on extreme wild challenge. Wow, this is incredible! Two men, some hills, and a whole load of brilliant tech. But can the city boys cut it? It's a huge challenge with canoes, bikes, more bikes, gadgets, guns, Otis's bum, and a butler. Excuse me, is my often drink? Also in this show, I head to Switzerland to look at some of the world's most incredible concept cars. And John joins forces with Dame Kelly Holmes. Excellent, you're catching me up now. To give the latest in interactive fitness tech a thorough workout. <laughs> Welcome to The Gadget Show. In this week's challenge, Otis and I are taken out of our natural environment. Yeah, namely the city. They were yeah. told to prepare for a race across alien territory, the British countryside. Yeah, but, it, you know, it's, it's a wilderness out there. Seriously, there were no cappuccino bars, or there weren't where I went. <sighs> uh, limited broadband and wild animals. Wild animals? Yeah. The ones I saw were... Listen, let me just say this, right? It's logical. When you've been oppressed Hang as a it. cow... Yeah. For long enough, right, there is a point at which they turn and they start milking your back. <laughs> they do not. I, I came out of my tent and I saw a cow milking a man. I, I'm convinced. Anyway, can I move on? Yeah. All they were told was that it was a two-day challenge and they would have to sleep out in a tent <laughs> and they could take whatever technology they wanted, but not milking technology. And I'm allergic to grass. The Derbyshire Dales, 500 square miles of rolling countryside. It's made up of stone walls, picturesque villages and about a million sheep. But we weren't worried. We were prepared for anything. We'd been given free reign to choose all the tech we thought we might need for the two-day challenge. OK, Jason, you do realise this is supposed to be a race. Yeah. Well, well, explain all of this kit, then. Dude, I couldn't. I mean, we haven't got long <laughs> enough in the show. Bioflex technology, my rucksack makes it nice and comfortable. I've got a dual hob, all right, for my cooking. Best of all, inflatable kayak. OK, as opposed to you lugging all that stuff around, I've gone light. These bad boys are running, hiking and walking shoes all in one. Nice. I have a sat-nav watch. Good. Very lightweight. And also, I've got a jet boil. OK, this will heat up water. Ooh. Who's that? Jason and Otis, you have each selected all the tech you think you need to win a Rufty Tufty Wild Challenge. Now we're going to put your choices to the test. OK, you must race from where you are now, Matlock Bath, to Monsall Head. En route, there are three checkpoints that you must pass through. First to Monsall Head wins the challenge. Woohoo! Good luck, mate. Yeah, I might be a while. Uh... The first checkpoint was a mile south of our starting position. I was going to hit the road, Jason was going to hit the water. Yep, I was going to be travelling in this, an inflatable kayak. How long does it take to pump up, mate? Ah, oh, about three minutes. I might be halfway there by that point. You'll need to be my friend, because when this bad boy gets going on those rapids... <laughs> of course, being a gentleman, I gave him time to inflate his vessel. All the very best, mate. Thank you, Margaret. But that right. was the only thing I gave him, and as he struggled to get in the water, I was flying. Fortunately, our safety boatman was on hand to help out. Before I got on the river, I wasn't sure how this large advanced elements kayak was going to handle, but I needn't have worried. It went pretty much where I pointed it, which was no doubt helped by the aluminium ribs that keep the body stiff. Ah. Woo! Wow, this feels so much sturdier than I thought it would. It's really slicing through the water. I thought because it's big, it would throw me around much more. Let me tell you about my boots. They're from Salomon. They are the Cosmic 4D GTX. They received a coveted 5Gs from John and Brian Blessed when they tested them recently, and after wearing them, I could see why. They're hiking boots, but they're made with trainer technology. They're light, comfortable, extremely robust. Doesn't feel like I'm jogging in a pair of boots at all. Right, there he is, look. We found that he's behind me at the moment. With help from the current, Jason soon caught up. But further downstream, there were some little rapids. Rocks, inflatable canoe, you know what I'm saying? Ah, but what Otis didn't know is that this kayak has not one, not two, but three tear-resistant skins. Woo, this is a fun bit. Rapids, bring them on. I'm loving this. This just opens your lungs out. 
With the Rapids successfully negotiated, all I had to do was get out and run. While Jason was still clambering out of his canoe, I arrived at the first checkpoint where I was presented with a choice of transport for the next leg of the challenge. Cable car or scooter. And just as I was making my choice, Brad re-arrived, and that really focused my mind. No! Cable car or scooter? Scooter, please. Ah. <laughs> Enjoy the ride, Jason. Okay. <laughs> Damn! Our next checkpoint was at Bonsall, a village on the other side of the valley. It was an easy three miles by road or a cable car journey followed by a short cross-country yomp. But I wasn't disappointed. I was still confident I could beat Otis by taking the more direct route. And the cable car gave me the chance to get dry. Good, mate. This is my scooter on steroids. It's the Piaggio MP3 LT. Now, the reason it's a bit beefier than your standard scooter, it's got 400cc engine compared to 125 or maybe even 50, and also it's got two wheels at the front, making it a lot more stable. As I approached the end of my cable car ride, I decided to use my GPS. Right, first checkpoint is a place called Bonsall. But once I'd entered my waypoint, I was in for a shock. It's about a mile and a half away. Oh. Back on the road. Get your motor running. The Piaggio never missed a beat. Head out on the highway. Oh, this is great. I'm pretty sure Jason isn't having as much fun getting up to the top of this peak as I am. Come on, baby, yes. That's where Otis was wrong. Oh, this is great. I was now on a downhill stretch and loving it as I flew across the ground with the grace and poise of a gazelle. Oh, sh oh. <laughs> It was fun at the time, but little did I know that that fall would cost me dear later on. And as we got close to the next checkpoint, it was still anyone's race. Well, I'm just going to pull in here and check my map. I know the checkpoint is close by, but I'm not exactly... <laughs> yes, please! But in the yes, end, please. scooter power had done it. I'd beaten Jason and my reward was a massage. Music and everything. Hey, it's tough Thank work you. riding a scooter. Yes, this I'll do. I know I've got a few minutes on Jason. Wrong again, my friend because I was a lot closer than I just thought. <laughs> oh, round one to me. Yeah. However, Jason, yeah. very nice. Don't you think? Yeah. This is, I yeah. think this is genius because it opens up this sort of activity to people that live in the city or live in a flat and they yeah. have nowhere to store an actual boat. I'll tell you what else I liked. Your boots, you know, hiking boots that you can yes. actually run in. Brilliant. Yeah, zero complaints about the boots. Uh, I ran a good mile, mile and a half in them. Zero chafing. My toes didn't get crushed. Zero chafing? Zero chafing. Wow. Yeah, that's, that's they were extremely impressive. comfortable and did feel like runners. So, Otis reached the checkpoint first Chafers. without any chafing, yeah. <laughs> which is always a good thing. But will his massage slow him down? Will Jason's fall come back to haunt him? Yeah. Ladies, will we see any more of Otis's body? Do you hope Probably. so? All those questions <laughs> and more that I haven't even thought of yet as the extreme wild challenge between Otis and Jason continues later on in the show. <laughs> but right now, it's time for a break. But after that, John and double Olympic gold medalist Dame Kelly Holmes work up a sweat Ooh, testing the latest interactive fitness gadgets. Ooh, gosh. Welcome back. Now, I want to talk to you about fitness gadgets. If, like me, your heart sinks at the mere mention of the word gym, then fear not, because tech is here to help. I found three new interactive fitness gadgets that should help you get fit in innovative and exciting ways. And to test them, I headed off to the dreaded gym to meet a world expert in being fit. This is double Olympic gold medal winner and current London 2012 ambassador, Dame Kelly Holmes, who had kindly agreed to cast her professional eye over our tech. What I brought along today are three interactive fitness gadgets that claim to offer fresh perspectives on keeping fit. OK. And I was rather hoping you'd help me road test them because I'd be useless at it on my own. Absolutely. Yeah, Great. let's do it. First one's over here. OK. First up was EA Sports Active for the Wii, a virtual personal trainer game that's keen to take over from Wii Fit, the current market leader. But what does a pro like Dame Kelly think of using games to get fit? 
since the introduction of these games, I think they certainly have encouraged more people to do something more than they ever would. So getting the heart rate up, having a bit of fun, being active. So actually, they have a good idea, very good idea. Now there are 25 different activities to choose from. Yeah. What should we go for? Well, I think it's got to be number one run, really, hasn't it? The game responds to movements made by your Wiimote and Nunchuck, which sits in the supplied leg strap while you dance, stretch, or in my case, race an Olympic gold medalist. Oh, oh gosh. Is that, is that required? I'm only, I'm only joking. Oh, right. Good. <laughs> mm, I've got my heart going well already. Run now. And once the race got underway, Kelly showed she meant business. We're on the track now. This is my fourth day, remember? Oh, 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 oh. Not surprisingly, Kelly left me for dead to scoop yes. gadget oh. gold. Way to go. Oh. And if you're really serious about getting fit, you can also set yourself a 30-day challenge with daily routines spurred on by a virtual personal trainer. All right. So, what did Kelly think overall? Good. Well, you got a bit of a sweat on, so yes, it's, uh, it's got to yeah. give a bit of a workout there. I actually enjoyed it. I think it's really good. Gets the heart rate up. Um, it's something a bit fun, you're doing it with a partner. And the good thing is you can finish it any time, so... That sounds like a good idea. Let's get and try the next one. OK. This is the e-spinner, an electronic exercise bike with its own virtual spinning class instructor. Welcome. Now, I've seen these spinning classes before and they absolutely terrify me. Oh, they are terrifying, yeah. I've done a couple myself. You've done them? Oh, they are so hard. And being an athlete, you use yeah. your bum and your, your hammies under here, but quads, this is the one <laughs> we've got to be working on, yes. I think we need a bit of work on them. You can manually programme the length or difficulty of your workout, but Kelly suggested we tackle one of the interactive spinning classes led by our all-too-fit-looking virtual instructor. Three, two, one. How are you feeling so far, John? I'm feeling fine, but I think the hard bit is yet to come. As well as tracking your calories burnt, you can watch your heart rate using an optional wireless heart rate monitor, and it was pretty obvious whose vital organ was working overtime. 129. OK, mine's on there. 108 at the moment. Ooh. But to take your mind off the pain, you can tune into TV channels or play songs and videos via an iPod or USB drive. I really like it. I think it's a great concept. Under the watchful eye of Kelly's new friend and my new nemesis... Here, just stay with me. ..we raced hard to the end. Come on, John. <laughs> You're doing good. Oh, <laughs> well, what do you think of this, then? I really enjoyed it. I think it's a really good workout. Certainly gets your heart rate up. So, thumbs up for the e-spinner. But we still had one more gadget to test, the Simul Trainer. A range of computer games that interact with gym equipment and allow you to compete. So a wire runs from the computer to a treadmill, an exercise bike. In this case, we've got a rowing machine. Mm -hmm. And using the internet connection, you can compete against fellow users around the world. Sounds great. Should we give it a go? Mm. OK. You can also play offline to improve your personal times or go head-to-head -head with friends. Keen to save face after my earlier trouncing on the track, I floated the idea of a time trial rowing race down a portion of the Thames. Kelly set the time to beat. Three, two, one. Go! The game takes a feed from the rowing machine's onboard computer, so you can see how you're doing. And Kelly flew down the quarter mile course in no time. And you're there! <laughs> That's 136, and you're in first place. Let's keep it like that then. <laughs> I think it's your turn now. Let's go! Despite a fast start, I soon came a cropper. Oh, oh, the the oh, good, <laughs> Uh, Competition, you have to just keep going. I was trying Doesn't my matter best. what happens. <laughs> Had it affected my chance to get equal? You're catching me up now. One, two, and finish. Yes. Have yes. I won? No, I'm afraid oh. not. I beat you by two seconds, so very Ooh, pleased with that. A few more straights, though, I could have had you. Well, I'm just pleased oh. you fell off because you kept my street cred alive, so ah. thank you very much. Okay. <laughs> Pleasure. Now, as exercise machines, though, I think it's yep. a fantastic idea, isn't it, this concept? What do you think? Oh, definitely. I mean, we've both got a really good cardio workout there, didn't we? So, yeah, Should really say. good. Yeah. So, all three had got our blood pumping, but what about G ratings? Well, it's three Gs for the Simul Trainer. Being able to compete against friends may bring some excitement to your workout, but the simple software and crude graphics let it down. EA Sports Active also gets three Gs. It's undoubtedly a cheap and fun way to exercise, but the repetitive nature of the games may cause you to lose interest before you get fit. And it's four Gs for the E-Spinner. 
With slick visuals and a wealth of workout options, this bike offers a high-tech, user-friendly way to get fit, whether you're an Olympic athlete or just starting out. <laughs> no! Yay! Oh, oh, hang on, I can't stop. Oh. It's still spinning. Apply friction. Care. Emergency friction. Woo! Woo! Good. Yeah. I suppose you think you've got the force now? I've got the force, girlfriend. Let's see if you have. Come over here. OK. Oh. Out of breath. Oh. Right, this is the Star oh. Wars Force oh. Trainer. Right, go on. Take the cap off. Get the glasses off. Oh. Right, put Anything this else? headset. Yeah, no. Okay. Case, nothing else. <laughs> put this on your head. Where, make sure all the sensors are touching your skin. Okay. So you've got a good head. You're just going to plug it into the mains, aren't you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Now, I've paired this up right, with the ready. unit. OK. OK, so you've got to concentrate, be calm. So the EEG sensor technology reads the brain waves, transforms them... Improving you are. ..into energy. <gasps> All right. Yeah! OK. You made it move. Woo! Nice one. Level, level whatever it is, 15? No, it's level one. Hmm? It has got 15 levels. That was only level one. Switch on again. Switch on again. Let's do it. Press the mind button. Focus. Nah, it's broken. Hmm? Now it's time to return to our extreme wild challenge. Now, you'll recall that after the first stage of our three-part wild challenge, uh, when we'd use kayaks, gadget up scooters, cable cars, we were roughly neck and neck. What do you mean, roughly neck and neck? Well, you're blatantly in the lead. Your neck was maybe a little fraction ahead of mine. OK, look, a small lead, but a lead nonetheless. OK, so Thanks. as we rejoin the action, my ridiculously competitive two co-presenters huh? had both hit checkpoint one. Having got there first, Otis was having a nice massage, enjoying nice. some music, and having run a mile and a half, Jason got there very much not in the lead, because Otis was in the lead. OK? Just to be clear, I'm in a lead, yeah? No way, man. Having a massage. <laughs> Dude, give him a sports massage. Nice and deep, yeah? Real deep penetration. Anyway, mate, love to join you with your incense and your finger plucking. But I think the next route is there if my sat nav serves me right. So, uh, you enjoy yourself, mate. Wait, I'm you... off. Are you going to go now? Come on, my friend. <sighs> Our next task was to navigate across country to a campsite eight miles away, close to an ancient stone circle called Arbor Low. Up until now, the roads and footpaths had been clearly marked and navigation hadn't been an issue. But at the edge of the village, the route became much less clear. Um... I've no idea, really. For navigation, I was using the Active 10 Plus sat-map, which is normally really easy to use, particularly when loaded with the optional large-scale map that comes on a separate SD card. To navigate, you just move a red circle to where you want to go and enter a waypoint. A yellow line then shows your route. Keep the blue circle, your current position, on that line and you can't go wrong. Except this time, it wasn't working. Look, I could have done something stupid to this device, but if I did, I don't know what it was. It was working fine half an hour ago. Now I just can't zoom in to anything of any usefulness. Just got a bunch of pixels. I mean, this isn't pixelated. And there was a good reason why my GPS wasn't working. I didn't know it, but my earlier fall had popped out the SatMap's SD memory card, containing the larger scale map I needed for this part of the challenge. This should have been great news for me, except I was struggling too. I've tried to figure this thing out. It's a Garmin 4 Trek 401. It looks really cool. It's got a compass, measures your speed, it times your walk and shows your position. There's also a potentially very simple interface. A small man representing me, the walker. If you enter a destination, a line appears showing the direction you should walk. Problem was, it just didn't work. The line jumped all over the place, telling me to walk in totally different directions, which made it worse than useless. What I'm tempted to do is just follow behind Jason and then overtake him at the end. Although that plan lasted roughly five minutes. Do you know where you're going, mate? I have absolutely no <laughs> clue whatsoever. When I was looking at this map earlier, I was pretty sure that I had to take the, the most northwesterly path. We were both clueless. Right, this is, this is my junction. My Garmin kept telling me to go in different directions. And I was just guessing, as my sat-map still wasn't showing enough features to enable me to navigate successfully. 
I feel like I'm going northwest. I feel like I'm going northeast. My, my mind's playing tricks on me. Finally, I gave up with the little man on my Garmin and reverted to the device's more basic interface, a digital compass with a big arrow in the middle that points in the direction you need to go. This was much more reliable, but it did mean I also had to map read. But knowing exactly which way to go, I was back on track. And you know what? If this is the right way, I'm now in the lead. <laughs> what is it they say? Great minds think alike? Right, I've come up with an idea. My sat map, as well as the ordnance servo map, also features a digital compass. Now, to calibrate it, I need to put it on a flat surface and spin it round two times. That's crazy, isn't it? And hopefully, I can use it to orientate myself northwest, which should take me to my next checkpoint. I now knew where I was going. The race was back on. Oh, this is great. And I was sure my grit and determination would soon see me back in the lead. I may have come up against a slight hurdle. Uh, there's three rather large balls in that field. Can you see the horns on that one? Run away, run away! But it seemed that Otis was made of sterner stuff. All right, cows. How you doing? Yeah? All right. <laughs> hey, that was brave, wasn't it? Hey, I went for a field of cows. All right, it wasn't snakes, but I'm a city boy, remember? I'm not breaking into a run. I'm all right. Having both negotiated some vicious-looking beasts, we were now back on track to fit and trim city boys. Loving the great outdoors, the race to the checkpoint where we'd be spending the night was on. Finally, the end for me was in sight. I had just metres to go. And at that exact time, Otis chose to call. Time for me to gloat and celebrate my victory. Hello, Otis. How you doing, man? I'm, I'm good, sir. I'm really, really good. Jason, whereabouts are you? Dude, you're not going to want to hear the answer to that question. I Why am. Not? I am within... It's got to be less than 100 metres of the finish line, baby. Really? Congratulations, yep. mate. Yeah. I'm probably within... 100 millimetres no, of you... the finish line. I'm already here, mate. No, you're joking me. No, 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 I wouldn't joke about something like that. But, Jason, there is some good news, yeah? I'm here at the checkpoint. There are two tents. Two yeah? tents, OK. Two tents, yeah. And the good news is I get first choice. No. And I'm taking no. the biggest one. <laughs> oh, man. Oh. Victory too. Hey, <laughs> there's nothing more frustrating, though, clearly, than being in a field of cows and your sat nav not working properly, is that? I can tell you something that's a little bit more frustrating. Trying to get your little man to work, calling the makers of the little man and having them say, no, we can't get him to work either. That's frustrating. I was lost. Yeah, that's pretty bad news. I've got to say, though, despite not winning this stage. <laughs> I actually have to say that if I were able to give G's to a device in the challenge, which we don't normally do, in fact, actually, yeah. can we make it happen right now, I would give the sat map Active 10 5 G's. <laughs> Are they there? Yeah? All right, 5 G's, fantastic, easy to use. Yeah. When the uh, SD card isn't dropping out like it did for me, <laughs> uh, the ordnance survey map functionality is great for rambling and tracking all that sort of stuff. Yeah. Lovely bit of kit. Still couldn't walk through a field of cows, though, could you? You go, they were bulls, okay. intent <laughs> on bullocking me or whatever they do. <laughs> Better bullocks, if you ask me. Right, time for another short break now, but after that. Otis and I continue our extreme wild challenge oh. and face a night of fear. Oh. And I travel to Switzerland to see some truly amazing concept cars. <laughs> That'll wake you up. Welcome back. Next up, Susie with some really big gadgets. Big gadgets with wheels uh, and steering wheels and maybe some gear sticks. In fact, some, some of you would probably call them cars. I think that's a mistake. In my opinion, what you're about to see are big, drivable gadgets. This factory building, tucked in the corner of a small village in Switzerland, looks a bit, well, dull. But inside is a collection of machines that will take your breath away. 
Welcome to Rinspeed, creators of the world's most amazing vehicles. Imagine if Disney, Steven Spielberg and, I don't know, say NASA got together to design cars. Well, they would probably come up with something like these. They build just one car a year. Each one is totally unique. Each is worth around a million pounds. But even if you've got that sort of money lying around, you can't have one because they are not for sale. Not ever. The cars are largely financed by other manufacturers eager to showcase their latest space age materials and technical expertise. Unlike most other concept cars that you find at motor shows all over the world, Rin speeds actually work and they all have their own specific purpose. Like this, the Presto, which tackles the irritating problem of parking. Electric motors operate rails that slide together to shrink the car by nearly a metre, getting you into those tight spaces normal family cars could only dream about. Don't forget, though, make sure you turf the kids out first. If a bit of road rage lurks in your psyche, then there's the Senso, which uses colour and smell to create the right amount of stimulation to keep you alert but not stressed. You attach a sensor to your body that records your pulse rate and then this camera here can detect how the car is being driven. All the information is then sent to an onboard computer and the software can tell if you're a little bit anxious or if the car's being driven quite erratically. Then the car is told to emit a nice soothing blue light and waft of vanilla to calm you down. Get a little too relaxed though when the car will start to pump out some pungent citrus smells and glow a feisty orange. That'll wake you up. My next ride was the transparent Exaxis. It's made from a material called Macrolon, an extremely strong polycarbonate plastic. This scuba is an underwater car, but as you can see, there's a vital ingredient missing. The roof. But Rinspeed worked out that by enclosing the passenger compartment, there'd be so much air trapped in here that the car would need to weigh at least three tonnes just to overcome the natural buoyancy. So instead, you just put on a mask and goggles, hook up to the inbuilt compressed air system, then simply open the doors to let the water in. The controls used to drive the electric-powered car on the road then operate four other electric motors for the propellers and depth thrusters. What about this? The Extreme. I know it looks like something out of Thunderbirds, but it's actually a pickup truck. Look at this. Check out the door. It's so cool. Oh, I love it. Oh, yeah. I just want you to know something, though. I didn't do that. There is a problem with conventional pickups, though, because despite the fact they've got that big cargo area at the back, because they're so high off the ground, they find it difficult to pick up anything big or heavy, like, um, oh, I don't know, hovercraft? Naturally, Rinspeed had the answer. Build in a hydraulic lifting device and you can virtually take anything, anywhere. Clever people, those Swiss. Oh, Susie, please, 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 the shrinking car. I'll wash cars for <laughs> you. Do you know, in one and a half days, I drove four million pounds worth of cars. That's incredible. Do you know, I think it's refreshing that such a place exists, you know, in the kind of mass, yeah. mass production age, don't you? Absolutely, and there's more to come, watch your space. I can't wait. Competition time now, and this week, something I'm sure you're going to like. This week is a little something special. Yeah, you better believe it. Yeah. Susie. Britain's first lady of tech, the queen of gadgets, has put together this week's prize fund. So, trust me, you want to enter this week's competition. Yeah, I hope so. It's all true. I've put together my top 50 gadgets, things that have come out top in my tests over the years and top on the website. And I think it's pretty much every gadget that you could want to tactically kit out your house. I, I like that. I was going to say this might be the only time you do this. I mean, this is a pretty novel idea, so yeah. uh, get it while it's hot, OK? Susie's list of all of the gadgets chosen personally by her mm -hmm. is going to be read to you right now by the lady Oh, herself. and if you win, come to the studio and I'll talk you through them. You could win a Vespa 50cc scooter, a Formula One driving experience, an Apple TV, a PS3 Slim, a Microsoft Xbox 360, a Nintendo Wii, a DSi, a PSP, a Denon Blu-ray player, a 42-inch plasma TV, 
a 32-inch LCD TV, and Sky HD for a year, a Slingbox Pro, a 5.1 surround sound system, a Canon 450D SLR, a Fujifilm F100, and a Flip Video Ultra HD, a Gorillapod, a Polaroid Pogo, a BlackBerry Bold, an iPhone, a Jawbone Bluetooth headset, an Apple MacBook, an Asus EPC, a Sony Reader, a Dura coffee machine, a Tefal Quick Cup, a Dyson Ball vacuum cleaner, a pair of GHD hair straighteners, a Champion juicer, an iPod Nano, a B&W Zeppelin iPod dock, a Sonos music streamer, a Pure Mini Dab radio, a Technics deck, a pair of Sennheiser headphones, an Aerial 7 sound disc beanie hat, a Cambridge Audio One Hi-Fi, a TomTom Go Live, a Power Traveller Power Monkey Explorer, some Altec travel speakers, a Blur Power Kite, a Cannondale Bad Boy Bike, a Didier Trick freestanding induction oven and a pair of Ray-Ban outdoorsman shades, a Garmin sports watch, an SOG multi-tool, a negative film scanner, a Trace Me luggage tracker and a Timberland suitcase duffel bag. It's a prize fund worth over 17 grand. And to be with a chance of winning the lot, you'll need to know the answer to this question. What is the name of Batman's butler? Is it A, Jeeves, B, Parker or C, Alfred? To enter, call 0904 161655 or text A, B or C to 63555. Or send your answer, name and contact telephone number on the back of a postcard or sealed envelope to Gadget Show 12, PO Box 46556, London M1, 0 WW. Calls cost £1.50 from a BT landline. Calls from other networks may vary and from mobiles will cost considerably more. Text cost £1.50 plus one message at standard network rate. For rules, go to 5.tv slash win. Lines close at midday on Monday the 26th of October and two days later for postal entries. Of course, we'll show you the question again at the end of the show. Good luck. Now it's time to return to this week's wild challenge. Yeah, now the last time we saw the boys, Otis had arrived at the campsite first and had nabbed what he thought was the best tent. Yes, what I thought was the best tent. Yeah. What he thought was the best tent. <laughs> With hindsight, the difference between the two tents might not have seemed that great. But after the long hike we'd had, it mattered. You are hey. kidding, right? Oh, that, is a, that is a joke. You can always share with me. I wasn't happy. <laughs> this, this is ridiculous! <laughs> but little did I know that that little tent was hiding a very big and very lovely surprise for me. <laughs> Hi, Hello. Jason. <laughs> Hello. Hello. I'm your butler. Allow, on. allow me to show you to your tent. <laughs> what do you oh, yeah! You can show to my tent! Come on out, man! And boy, he wasn't joking. Packed into an ordinary-looking hold-all, he brought me an ultra-trick mountain hardware space station designed for serious adventures in, say, the Arctic or the Himalayas. The geodesic shape minimises wind loading and it's practically impervious to water and UV damage. I was gutted, but my tent was pretty cool too. Its clever double-hook design means it's up in seconds, although it's probably more suited to Glastonbury than Everest. With the sun and our campsite set, we both settled down for a night under canvas. So, excuse me, may I offer you a drink? Ah, oh, thank you, Brian. Splendid. Thanks thank very you, much. Yeah, you know what? I could quite get used to this old camping lark. OK, so Jason's got his creature comforts and he's got an over-large tent there. But I'm not worried. I've got my jet boiler, which heats up water twice as quickly as conventional camping stoves. It works because a mini heat exchanger in the bottom channels the gas jets right to where they're needed, allowing the stove to work much more efficiently. And I've got this, a portable DAB radio. Very clear, and I can sing along to my favourite tunes in it. Oh, I do like this one. Yeah, you see, I like my entertainment a little bit more multimedia. Like this. Checking out the world's first portable Blu-ray player, Panasonic DMP B15. Um, tell you what, Brian, let me losing a bit of juice. Could you just carry on pedaling, sir? Perfect. Thank you. Check it out. Power Plus gives you 12 volts, 24 volts, AC and DC. It's got a battery in there, LED lighting. And of course, if you're feeling fit like Brian, my butler, you can pedal when you need some juice. That should do it, Brian. Thank you very much. I love this scene, right? He goes for a job at the newspaper. Does he get the job, sir? I can't tell you that, ruin it. 
And just when we were settling down for the night, things took a sinister twist. Warning, marauders on the loose. See them off. I've got just the thing. Do excuse me, sir. Yep. I've been reliably informed there are marauders in the area. Shall I prepare a gun for you, sir? Marauders? And wow. just to let you know, sir, I am packing some heat. Oh, that's great, Brian. Thank you. A team of crack paintballers were lurking, waiting to attack. Our challenge was to protect our tents and see them off. But of course, we did have tech on our side. I think the marauders are here. To help turn a dark field into a floodlit paintballing kill zone, I brought the Lenser X21 LED torch. Ha ha ha! They cannot hide from the Lenser! It's fantastic! I can see everything! Low power consumption combined with a beam that puts out 1,000 lumens. It's awesome! Sir, 12 degrees to the right, 12 degrees to the right. I'm sure Otis's torch was cool, but a bright light can also make you an easier target. So I'd opted for the sneakier option, the Night Spirit 2 monocular night vision scope. It's one of the best mid-price night vision scopes on the market. Its Generation 2 intensified tube gives 18 degrees of vision and up to three times magnification. And what's more, it's fully waterproof. Cease firing, cease firing. Pull your arms, sir. I'll go and finish him off. All right, sir. <laughs> They've all gone. Oh, no, there's one left. Good work, Brian. Oh, the butler did it. <laughs> oh, Brian! <laughs> you know, normally on this show, it's the tech that's the stars, yeah. right? But, Brian, yeah. what a guy. So funny. Sir, there are marauders outside. <laughs> I'm packing some <laughs> heat! He was <laughs> just the coolest guy. He was. Now, OK, so my night vision goggles I thought were very effective, but your LED torch was fantastic, wasn't it? Amazing. Such a strong and wide beam. You saw off the marauders with it, yeah, but we actually used it for a long time for a bright torch like that in the tent as our main source of light. Fantastic. Uh, really good fun, a great part of the challenge, but, of course, all to play for. It's all down Isn't to it? the final part of the challenge. Join us after the break when we will reach the climax of this week's Wild Challenge. Welcome back. You join us as these two so-called macho men are flexing their muscles and warming up in preparation line. for the climactic sprint that will decide who will become the king of the Wild Challenge. <laughs> No, we, no, we filmed that last week. I know. We're not doing that. Yeah. Well, why are you warming up for, then? Well, I'm, I'm just trying to see if I can touch my butt with my head. Men do that. For the final part of our wild challenge, we were going to do something we've never done before on The Gadget Show. We were going to have an off-road versus on-road bike race. And for this test, we picked two of the most desirable high-tech bikes you can buy. I was riding a Trek Equinox TTX. Its frame, forks and wheels are all made out of carbon fibre. This not only makes the bike very light, but also allows it to have a very narrow profile, keeping drag to a minimum. This bike was developed for Lance Armstrong after he won the Tour de France. It's the best possible bit of kit I could have for speeding downhill. It's aerodynamically constructed. However, there is a very strong crosswind and there's a lot of surface area here. I may be in trouble on my way downhill. I'd gone for the Bionicon Golden Willow Scandium for its bulletproof build quality and uber gadgety suspension. It's the most adaptable mountain bike we've ever tested on the Gadget Show, as it can be set up in numerous different ways. Now, I love the military-grade aluminium frame on this bike. It's, it's trick, but what I'm really excited by is a system that's been specially designed to enable it to go on the flats uphill as well as downhill. This is often the problem. When you've got a downhill bike, it's no good on the flat or when you want to go back up the hill. However, all you need to do on this bike, even while you're riding, is press one button and the forks can be adjusted up or down. Right now, it's in um, the flat configuration or for going uphill. But with one push, you'll see it rise up. It's a superb idea. In fact, did you get Otis on the phone, yeah? Tell him I'm ready to go, because I'm going to beat him on this. For these serious bikes, we needed a serious test. For Jason, it would be a tricky two-mile off-road descent, while I would have a longer, but hopefully faster, three-mile on-road sprint to the finish. Three, two, one, go! Wow, 
this is incredible! Such an adrenaline rush, oh my god! Speed is what my bike is all about. The gears are tall, the tyres are ultra-narrow, and the ride can only be described as hard. But it works, and within seconds, I was doing over 40 miles an hour. All this bike wants to do is go really fast. I'm having to concentrate all the time on making sure I'm going as straight as I can. That really is a bad crosswind there. I can hardly even speak. The blood is pumping through my body. To push a mountain bike fast downhill, you need confidence in your suspension and grip. And this is where my Golden Willow delivers. Mega wide wheels, great suspension front and back meant I was flying. Wind wasn't an issue for me, and by the halfway stage, I was in the lead. Ah, oh, I'm kind of doing this a little by accident, because it's just so incredibly steep. There is no way Jason is moving as fast as this. I didn't pedal any harder, because I'm really worried about this crosswind. I was sure the weather had cost me the race, but as I dropped into the valley, I also dropped out of the wind, and I was able to really push my incredible set of wheels to even greater speeds. But I was flat out, having changed my suspension for the flat. This was going to be a very close finish. I was flying and loving it, and now I could smell victory. There is no way! Dini is going to catch me! Woo-hoo-hoo! Oh, yeah! Come on! Woo! Off-road! Wins! Well done, man. Yeah! Oh, come on. Stuart's inquiry, you had gravity on your side helping you go downhill. I had a severe crosswind. These things aren't built to go in a crosswind and then to slice through as wind. As you know, as you know, one man... <laughs> just don't... Invisible don't wind. Don't take it out on the bike, um, Otis, <laughs> all right? One man's crosswind is another man's excuse, all right? <laughs> this... This is the machine! Trust me, in all seriousness, downhill bikes are great. They look cool and they perform really well downhill. But when you want to go and get a pint of milk on the flat, they're next to useless. You can hardly cycle them. They're that, they're that difficult. Yeah. So it's genius that they've developed this hybrid system. You like that bike, though, despite the fact they had sails in the wind. I love this bike. Yes, the, the wheels did act like sails. Yeah. The, the wind was catching me so much. It was an extremely frightening ride. I would love another opportunity to get yeah. on this well, bad boy. Well, despite all excuses, what I that accept, means I accept. is that Jason Bradbury yeah. is the king of the wild frontier oh, yeah, this baby. week, despite the fact that you're allergic to grass. I'm, so I'm, anything I'm, with blue sky. I'm sniffling just thinking about that. <laughs> yeah. And that's all we've got time for on this week's show, but we will see you next time. See you next time. Next time on The Gadget Show. With Halloween around the corner, <laughs> Otis and I get mischievous. <laughs> using tech to create the spookiest haunted house possible with the sole purpose of scaring the pants off a lovely, trusting mystery celebrity. <gasps> what the hell was that? What was that? Oh. Are you all right? Ooh. I give my rundown of the top five remote control flying toys. <laughs> and Jamie Cullen joins John to test the new iPod Nano against its competitors. Yeah, it's there. Sounds wow. good. Sounds really good. That's next week. But right now, before the credits roll, remember to enter this week's incredible competition. We're giving away 50 gadgets handpicked by the Gadget Show's very own Susie Perry. It's enough gadgetry to more than fill any tech lover's home. And to be with a chance of winning the lot, you'll need to know the answer to this question. What is the name of Batman's butler? Is it A, Jeeves, B, Parker, or C, Alfred? To enter, call 0904 1616 or text A, B, or C to 63555. Or send your answer, name and contact telephone number on the back of a postcard or sealed envelope to Gadget Show 12, PO Box 46556, London N1, 0 WW. Calls cost £1.50 from a BT landline. Calls from other networks may vary and from mobiles will cost considerably more. Text cost £1.50 plus one message at standard network rate. For rules, go to 5.tv slash win. Lines close at midday on Monday the 26th of October and two days later for postal votes. Goodbye, good luck.